There are angry reactions over news that teen Christian female captive of Boko Haram, Leah Sharbu, has given birth to a baby. And President Muhammad Buhari, in reaction to repeated attacks by bandits in Niger State and its environs, has directed the Nigerian Air Force to deploy its fighter aircraft to check the manners. This is PLOS Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome. There are various reactions from Nigerians and the Christian community over the news that teen Christian female captive of Boko Haram, Leah Sharibu, who has been in captivity for almost three years, has given birth to a child for one of her captors. She was 14 at the time of her capture and the only remaining Dapchi school girl from the over 100 abducted girls still being held hostage. Her father is not interested in what he describes as rumors. All he wants is to see his daughter returned alive. Is there hope that this will indeed happen? Joining us for a conversation on this are two public affairs analysts. We start with Jide Benson. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. And of course, we have Leonard Ebute, public affairs analyst as well. Pleasure to have your company tonight. Great, great to be with you, Felicity. All right. Um, the rumors seem to have gotten credence from the fact that journalist uh, Ahmed Sakeda, who um, over the years has shown to have some connection with the Boko Haram group, um, is confirming that she indeed had a baby. What is your reaction? Let me start with you, Jide. Well, there's no smoke without fire. And if, as you say, um, he has a history with Boko Haram and more than 50% of what he has always reported has turned out to be true, there's no reason why we should discount and answer this one. Um, so I'm one of those who believe that um, such a fate has befallen her. Leah Sharib, yes. what's your reaction? Well, I'm, I'm, happy, I'm pleased to hear she's alive, first of all. Um, that she's pregnant, right or wrong, is indication that there's proof of, some proof of life. And I think right now, rather than worry so much about, I'm sure having, giving birth to a baby will be the list of the, tr the turmoil she must have gone through. Rather than dwell on the possible rumor or the wise of our current reality, we need to focus more on trying to get her out of captivity, trying to really ascertain um, her well-being and pray that she, she rejoins her family. I mean, I'm really, really happy to hear anything that is proof of life as it relates to that young lady. Okay, th this uh, did not just happen today. It's been like two, three days or thereabout that the news broke. Uh, the federal government is yet to react. Is it that they have a different intel uh, than what we have? Because ideally, by now, we would have had a reaction from the government. This is almost the close of work on, on a Monday. Uh, we've had reactions from Khan. Um, in her area, and they're asking the president to um, investigate. Do you see that uh, happening or any reaction from the government? Well, what investigation would the government be doing to ascertain that she's pregnant? That she um, indeed has a child. Yeah, you know, I mean, the government has fallen short of um, expectations. If anything, by now that girl should not be there. If the government had um, deployed everything possible, the girl would not be in this sorry situation that she is now. Um, she may have been a victim of uh, what he calls Stockholm Syndrome, falling in love with her abductors. And because the news also says that um, she's accepted Islam, which is the very reason why she was held in captiv captivity in the first place, because um, she refused to accept Islam. And so having spent two years with her, uh, with her captors, they probably have fed her, they played with her, she had gotten used to them, and what became, um, dropped drop her guard. So it's, not, it's possible that she wasn't even raped. That's also what I mean. The federal government not saying anything. It's some form of admission of guilt. Um, I think that we have um, we allowed this to slide away. And we're talking about this now only because of the news that we have heard. I mean, in the next few days, we'll begin to talk about something else. And then Leah Sherwood um, is no longer on the top of the news. Um, stay with something you said about her accepting Islam. Yes. There is a contrary opinion, actually. Yeah. This Ahmed Sakeda also spoke with one um, Reverend Joe Billy, who is the president of uh, Church of the Brethren. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he has given a granted a press 
uh, statement where he said he had a conversation with uh, him. And uh, what he said was that I couldn't absorb the shock because Elias Sharibu had become a symbol. That's what I want to draw your attention to. A symbol of the Christian faith. He went on to say, I consider her Christian faith stronger than even that of many church leaders. Uh, my question is, has she really become a symbol of the Christian faith, considering that she's just a young girl who at the time of her abduction was just looking for education? Okay, so um, a few things to note here. While I celebrate any news of our well-being in any form or shape, um, we have to make a few things clear. She is a captive. There is, no, there is no kind of analysis that can paint any picture of love, of joy, of, and to the extent that she is in captivity because she rejected the, the situation she was in is proof enough for me. I think um, while journalism is typically ahead of intelligence, not just in Nigeria but everywhere in the world, um, it is poor reportage to bring up issues around faith, particularly the sensitivity of issues like that around Nigeria. I think it was an unnecessary part of the reportage. I think it didn't make sense. We're all worried only for the little girl's safety. And to talk of our acceptance of the reason for her captivity in the first place is really, really poor reportage. That's poor journalism. I think it's insensitive journalism. But, 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 but you, so, you have so, to, what the job of reporting yes. is, is to report what has happened, not yes. to garnish so it what, in any so, way. So the reportage was that she was held back because of her fate. Mm. And that has, you know, snowballed into her becoming some sort of symbol. Like this reverend is saying that he was shocked that he had to ask again and, and again. And that's why I query the logic, logic of it, because she is still held. If she was held for her faith and she is still held, the, the rule of logic is that she has still held to her faith. That's the rule of logic. So she has not been released. So the, 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 lo the logic is very clear to me. If we agree that she's held for her faith and she's still in captivity, then we must allow the logic flow through. That means so, you, 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 so, you follow the school of thought that she is now a symbol of the Christian faith in Nigeria I, I, as it is. I, I follow the, 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 the school of thought that this is hardly a Christian Muslim issue. This is, she's a symbol of the height of insecurity in this country. She is a reason for the government to know that we are citizens, first of all, not Christians or Muslims, and that they owe us citizenship responsibilities that has absolutely nothing to do with faith. And so the less Christian or Muslim we go about this, the closer we are to the reality of the situation we are in, and the closer we are to the remedial actions we need to take. What's your take on that? That she's a, she's a symbol? Symbol of the Christian well, well, faith. Because it seems to be that most times when news of her comes up, yes. um, the Christian association can, of various states, will yeah. come up with a statement yeah. you know, about her being. And then you see social media. Some people have actually galvanized conversation around this issue. Yeah. And they make, I don't know whether they're um, idolizing uh, her resistance, yeah. as we know. Or something else. Um, so, so my thoughts would have been that um, the Christian Association of Nigeria in her state and maybe that region of the country should have made her more a topical issue. If she were truly the symbol as they would like to make us believe, maybe her picture should have been at the entrance of every church in her community and in the entire state. Um, like I said, um, Leah Sharibu, on the strength of what happened to Leah Sharibu, I mean, some people may have lost elections whether her representative in the House of Assembly or the House of Representatives, or even the senator representing um, her constituency. Um, we, we haven't been fair to her, and we haven't been fair to her generation. We haven't been fair to the feminine gender. And the president has not um, given action to his word that not, um, everything will be done to get her back. And as I said, she's probably, she probably had gotten comfortable with her abductors. And to buttress his point, Truly, if she's actually converted to Islam, I don't think she'll be in captivity anymore. Because if she has accepted what they're asking her to do, then they'll let her go. Except, of course, they fear that when she leaves, she would renounce the faith again. 
Okay, I, I was going to follow that up, but let me just leave that for now and move on with other parts of the conversation. And I would like to talk about um, her father's reaction. Uh, various newspapers, as usual, they wanted a reaction, they wanted to be the first to get a reaction from the father. And the man um, was a bit exasperated. He, he was like, why are you bugging me? All I want is my daughter back alive. I don't care what condition uh, it is. And uh, the spokesperson, one doctor, pulled uh, from a university up north it, that speaks on behalf of the family, is also saying that these are all mere rumors. They don't care what condition she is in. All they want is her back uh, with her family. Um, what do you make of the reaction, especially in the light of, you know, Christian Association speaking, social media com commentators speaking, every other person talking? That's exactly what the entire nation should want. That's exactly what the reportage should have been about. So to raise any other side issues, different from the welfare of Leah, is merely patronizing her situation. Whether it is coming from the Christian Association, of, she did not set out on a journey to martyrdom. She wasn't a missionary as it were. She, she was just a child that went to school, got abducted. The story around her standing for her faith is still unverified. Even though I believe it, I'm a Christian and I want to believe it, and I'm a person of faith, right? But that is irrelevant to the fact that she's in a situation she did not set out to be in by virtue of that faith. She just happens to be a victim of a society that is grossly lacking in terms of the real issues around protection and value of human life. And so the discourse should be about the safety of Leah. What the family wants should be what the nation wants. It should be all the nation and can and everybody wants. And to bring any other issue different from this is actually, to me, cross insensitivity. If you have lost someone before or been in a position of near loss, you will understand that it does not matter to you whether the person you love comes broken, if they come at all. What's your take on the silence of government so far? Do you expect them to have a reaction? Or like I asked earlier, do they have some sort of intel that we don't have as at this point? Um, what I've come to see the government as is one that um, is not confronting the reality of its failure. Um, they're thinking of what to say. Maybe that's why it is delayed. I mean, almost every news medium has reported this in the last, what, 48 hours when the news broke. Um, so they're thinking, of it, they're thinking of a very tactical way to respond to it. Uh, we've come to a situation whereby um, when the spokespersons of the government speak, you can tell that they're speaking from their lips, they're not speaking from their hearts. They're speaking to retain their jobs, to protect their principle, to look good in the eyes of the public. But we're in a situation where the people that they're speaking to know that they're telling half-truths. They know that they're telling half-truths. And they know that the people that they're speaking to also know that they're telling half-truths. So it's a back and forth of um, so half -truths. What, what does that make of us as let's not just talk about the government yes. it, it seems that um, the narrative around mm. Leah Sharibu has you know been re reduced to religious um, um, issues other than like you highlighted you know have we failed collectively when it comes to the case of Leah yes, and yes. how can we you know sort of redeem ourselves it's almost three years oh, let, yes. let me bring okay. that question to you so when you generalize um you know, reactions, then you seem, you seem to bury good intentions in the average. Okay, so, so most times, the really strong voices of reason are really silent ones. They are not loud enough to see. So when we say, have we failed? I do not think we have all failed. A lot of people invested their prayers, invested their time, protests here and there. Some left their jobs to pursue Leah Sharibu's cause, and they saw Leah Sharibu as a representative of every other person who, by virtue of societal failures, have been victims. But, but you will agree like that it, most times the yes. conversation around, around uh, Leah Sharibu uh, hits the media when a topical uh, situation occurs. Maybe yes. it's her birthday or the anniversary uh, of the uh, number of days she's been in captivity mm -hmm. or like now that she has had a baby. What about sustained effort? Because if 
um, 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 you're, you're talking about the narrative in the media, how the media, yes, we have our responsibility, but there doesn't seem to be a sustained reaction when it comes to, I mean, push advocacy for her release. That would do no justice to people who may not be in the media, may not be in the intelligence community, but have followed this story, have made it their life's missions. And there are quite a number of them that we could point out. Like a reporter you talked about, he's been trying to follow the whole Boko Haram um, story. Sure. He's made a career out of it. And so when we, when, we, when we paint that umbrella picture, we miss out a few group of well-intentioned people including my, my humble self. I may not have done much in the open media in terms of pursuing this, but I've been a victim myself of insecurity firsthand. I've had to deal with it in my own way. And so I kind of understand that there are quite a number, like the family and all that, they only come on stage when you put them on stage. But I tell you every single night in their dreams, in their efforts, their involvement is, you, you, can, you can call it guaranteed. And above all, the communities from which that are primary targets of these kinds of issues, right? They sleep and live this reality on a daily basis. For them, it's much bigger than Leah Sharibu. So Leah Sharibu is just an outlet for others to lend a voice to a discussion that is the everyday reality of a wide group of people in Borno State and Northern Nigeria. Will this girl ever get released, do you think? Or will she continue to remain the idolized version that she's now been made of? Oh, um, never say never. And at the same time, I think we should moderate our hope. I mean, if we, if we follow what happened um, in, I think it was in Adama State last week, uh, the, the pastor that was um, arrested, uh, that was kidnapped, abducted, Killed. and they were just trying to make arrangements to get the ransom paid so that he released, and eventually they still went ahead to kill him. So um, we don't know the mind of the terrorists. We don't know if they have a heart or a conscience. So but one hopes that the government will not allow it to degenerate into that. Because I mean, there are instances in other crimes where one life has held the whole nation's attention. This is what Leah Sharibu should have represented. I mean, Nigeria is a multi-religious state, so everybody has a freedom to practice their religion as they deem fit. So somebody being held on account of faith is not something that any government should tolerate. Yes, we're all culpable. We're all responsible for having carried on with our respective lives in spite of one of us being held hostage. But the culpability rests primarily with the government because the security of lives and property is the primary responsibility of the government. I must say thank you very much, gentlemen, you. for your thoughts so thank far. You. Thank you for coming on the program. All right, we'll take a short break now. And when we return, the conversation will be about the president's order to deploy fighter jets to wipe out a bandit. Still on security, stay with us. <laughs> 